Now I want to go back to Maurice from Natania, which was at the beginning of my army year. Actually, I, as I said, I met him before I started the army, but he lived in Natania, and of course, when I was in the army in Natania, I saw a lot of him. Him and I, not only were we great as lovers, but then I was, as lovers, I got along with every man sexually. I never had any problem with that. But we were also very good friends, I thought. I knew it. We were extremely compatible in a crazy way. We were very compatible. I said before, we were both a little nuts, crazy-like. Uh, but we were... We got along fantastically well. That was way before I met Matke. The reason I'm bringing up this Maurice and Matke was that of all my relationships in Israel, those five years, those two men played the biggest part in my life. Now, Maurice, I will call him Maurice B. So there's no confusion with my stepfather. His name actually is Maurice Burns. Bernstein. So Maurice and I were extremely good friends, good lovers, good dancers. We were compatible in every way. And I felt extremely close to him. One particular night, we had gone out to dance and we had a few drinks. And I became a little depressed. I I, it's not so much depressed as very sentimental. And I, till today, I don't know what made me tell him about my stepfather. I, I, I have no idea. I just felt that we were so close. We weren't just lovers. We were good friends. And I was in one of those moods where I thought that I should be intimate with him in every way and he should know about me. I, of course, he knew I wasn't a virgin anymore, but he just assumed that I had started in Israel at a much later age. He he just didn't know anything about my stepfather. Anyway, I, I decided to, that particular evening, for some stupid, crazy reason, feeling very close to him and having the feeling nothing should be hidden from him, I decided to tell him about my stepfather and I, the whole story. And I told him, and he listened. And his reaction was such, it was unbelievable. He started calling him names, bastard, to take advantage of you at your age, and this and that. It was the first, the very first time I actually heard someone verbalize what the, the crime, in a way, that, that Maurice had committed, my stepfather. I never heard it before. I certainly couldn't understand what he had done that was so terrible. It's only much, much later that I realized what he had done to me, to my whole life after that. But Maurice, this Maurice, he, he it just hit him. It, it blew his mind. He, he couldn't get over it. And that's when he asked me, am I still corresponding? Because not only did I tell him about Belgium and at 14 and a half, I told him, he had visited me in Jerusalem, and I spent two weeks visiting the Israel with my stepfather and about the bicycle and the corresponding and everything. And that's when he asked me, am I still corresponding with him? And I said, yes, but I said, now that I told you and I'm, I'm feeling very relieved, and I, say, and I said to him, I think I'm finally out of it. I, I really don't care about him at all anymore, and I'm going to go home. And I said, I'm going to throw away every one of his letters, and I'm, I'm just going to stop writing, and that's the end of it. And he said, and Maurice said, that's very good. That's a good idea. Just forget about him. Cut him off completely from your life so you can make a life of your own. Now, his feelings were of protecting me in the sense that there was never any inclination on Maurice's part that he was going, Maurice B, that he was going to marry me or that we are going to end up our lives together one day. There was never any talk about that. I mean, we're both still very young and we were just very good friends and lovers, but, but there was a kind of protectiveness that 
he made me promise at least ten times that as soon as I get back to the camp, the, where I was, that I should destroy every letter, never write and encourage this again, because he says the man is completely sick, and I should I should stop it, and I promised I would, and I felt such a relief, such I, I was I, I felt so great. It was like <laughs> it, it was a fantastic feeling that finally someone else knows that it's not all on my shoulders. And I thought I did the right thing by telling Maurice this. Uh, I didn't realize how much I was going to pay for that afterward, later on. But in the meantime, that's the feeling I had that particular evening to let it all out and to tell him. I had mentioned earlier that um, Maurice's parents uh, were in the textile business in Atania and that a nice little factory and it seemed that once a year either Maurice or his father had to go back to Belgium to buy more uh, material um, for their business. That particular year it was Maurice's turn to go. They kept taking turns going to Brussels back and forth, Brussels, Natania, to, um, because actually they were in the import-export business, that now I remember. And that particular year, it was Maurice's turn. Now, I had a few months, I had already told him my whole background, my whole story, and about four months after that, it was his turn to go for a period of two weeks to Belgium to buy more materials. And I remember telling him not to forget to visit my mother and uh, to tell her how much I miss her, to tell her how I was doing, and also to um, there was a few little things that I wanted that my mother should send back with him uh, some clothes I, I had so little clothes I mean the army in Israel paid very very little and I had very private uh, belongings of my own except for the army clothes so I remember requesting uh, two skirts and two dresses if possible if she could do it and I gave him the address and all the information. In fact, all the years, the five years I was in Israel, whenever I knew anybody went back to Belgium, I always gave my mother's address. They should give my regards or they should tell them, they should tell her directly how I was doing. And, you know, this is a very normal thing, uh, you know, with young people living in a different country to... Um, you know, I always ask someone to go see their family. It was a very normal procedure. And Maurice said, of course he'll go and visit. And uh, I made a very strong point of telling him not to mention a word to my mother about my relationship with him or my relationship with anybody, and certainly not to mention my relationship with my stepfather, that she knew nothing, thank God, and that she's never to know. And he made a solemn promise that his lips will be closed and nobody will ever know. And Maurice uh, goes to Belgium. He, um, he did go visit my mother my st and my stepfather. And I found out later on that when he had called in the morning to say that he's a friend of Fanny, that, and he has my he has regards uh, for them, and that he I also requested if possible two skirts and two dresses, and he had said that we were very good friends and that um, he also lived in Atania etc etc, and my mother said oh that's wonderful that's wonderful, I'm going shopping this afternoon, and I will get what she needs. And she says, it just so happens I'm having a few people over tonight uh, who are friends of ours. And she couldn't wait. She, he had to come over that night and spend the evening with them and tell them all about Israel and me and the army and all that business. And I found all that out, of course, when he came home, when he came back to Natalia.